because this, this is Catholic doctrine. And the Catholic doctrine is not man-made. It doesn't come from human invention. It doesn't come from human internal uh, vital imminence, as St. Pius X speaks about with these modernists who, the, the, who believe and who promoted, even in the seminaries a hundred years ago, they were twisting all the scriptures, they were twisting all the dogmas of the faith, basing all, everything on evolution, so that they blasphemously even asserted that the sacraments themselves and the dogmas of the faith, such as the Holy Eucharist, just evolved out of man's need for the spiritual, man's need for something uh, above, which he calls God. And St. Pius X hammers these modernists. And, and I invite the men to reread Pashendi. The seminarian has just covered this with Father Pfeiffer in the seminary, and we all pretty much restudied it. And uh, it's, every time you read this, it's, it's more and more eye-opening and it's amazing to see that uh, this modernism condemned by St. Pius X is more prevalent now than it was a hundred years ago. Now it's infecting not only all the clergy, all the priests and bishops, but the popes, these Vatican II popes, have, have this poison in their head. And one thing you see when you study this encyclical is everything he says condemning modernism has triumphed at Vatican II. Vatican II is modernism in action. Vatican II is modernism triumphant in the Catholic Church. And that's why we can say truly the Catholic Church has been hijacked by the enemies. And that's why we can truly say with Archbishop Lefebvre, <coughs> there is not just one church and one pope as Bishop Follet continually contends, and he's wrong, because if he says there's one church and we're out of it, the SSPX, so we got to get back into it. But that totally contradicts the one who consecrated him, the one who founded the Society of St. Pius X to be a bulwark to defend the Catholic faith in this crisis. And that was Archbishop Lefebvre, and he spoke very clearly. There is one pope, yes, but there's two churches, the Catholic Church of Tradition of all time, which, which all traditional Catholics want to adhere to. They don't want this new fabrication, this Vatican II church that worships man. And what does St. Pius X mean when he speaks about the worship of man? That man has, has thrown off God. This is the age of apostasy. And how does man worship himself? Well, he explains it. Because for the modernist and for the modern clergy, the bishops and even this pope, the faith is not something outside that God has revealed with thunder and lightning and coming down on earth, working true miracles, establishing the seven sacraments and personally establishing the Catholic Church on St. Peter. The modernists deny all this. They say that these are, for example, St. Pius X will quote that they take St. John's Gospel and they will say St. John's Gospel is only his own meditations and his, his, his over-fervent uh, inner needs for the divine. And that's just what he wrote down. It's completely blasphemous. It completely, <coughs> completely overthrows the true inspiration of sacred scripture and the authority of the Catholic Church and the authority of the magisterium and every, all the seven sacraments are completely gutted out. And that's what's happened since Vatican II. The sacraments are all gutted out. And you have a new baptism called uh, initiation into the community. You have a new mass which is called the meal for the community. You have a new sacrament of confession called reconciliation, where you sit down and discuss your psychological problems. That is not the sacrament Christ established. So modernism is, it's a, it is a, it is a, it's, it's a synthesis of all heresies. It's the sewage tank of all heresies. And it has many tentacles. And it's a slippery eel. You can't, 
Once you think you pinned it down, it's another form. The, the, the reptile called the, the chamele chameleon. If the chameleon is on a brown rock, he looks brown. If he's on a gray rock, he looks gray. If he's on green grass, he looks green. He takes the color of, of his ambience. And that's how the modernists work. Listen to St. Pius X, his own words. To conclude, this is the evolution of doctrine. This whole question of faith and its various branches, we have still to consider, venerable brethren, what the modernists have to say about the development of the one and the other. First of all, the modernists laid down the general principle that, that in a living religion, everything is subject to change and must, in fact, be changed. Sound familiar? In this way, they pass to what is practically their principal doctrine, namely evolution. To the laws of evolution, everything is subject under the penalty of death. Dogma must change. The church, worship, that's the mass. The books we revere as sacred. Even the faith itself the enunciation of this principle will not be a matter of surprise to anyone who bears in mind what the modernists have had to say about each of these subjects. Having laid down this law of evolution, the modernists themselves teach us how it operates. And then he talks about how, how the, there's a vital evolution of the faith based on the experiences and the needs of the time. And this is, you, this is almost quoting... Pope Benedict XVI, the so-called traditional pope, and this Pope Francis, and Pope John Paul II, they're all riddled with modernism. And every one of them said, the doctrine on the social king kingship of Jesus Christ is outdated. The kingship of Christ, the Catholic states, the Catholic constitutions, that's something for the high middle ages when they believed in monarchies, and it was suitable for the time. But for the kingship of Christ now, it's the age of democracy. You can't expect Christ the king now. It's not practical and it's not reasonable. That, dear friends, is pure, unadulterated modernism, condemned by St. Pius X, condemned with 1,200 sledgehammers because it's so poisonous, these errors. And this is what has triumphed, and is still triumphing in the minds of the Catholics, of the, of the so-called Catholics. And that's why the traditional Catholics ha have had to rise up 50 years ago. And maybe if more resisted, more bishops and more priests and more faithful resisted 50 years ago, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. But they all obeyed. And obedience is a moral virtue. It's not the highest virtue. It is a, it's an important virtue. But obedience is subject to the faith. The faith is much higher than obedience. And if, if we're commanded to obey, then what goes against the faith, we can't obey. And that's why Archbishop Lefebvre, you know so well, he had to appear disobedient and say, Holy Father, I cannot obey you because you're disobeying all of tradition. And we are in the same situation now, where the priests of the resistance have to say to Bishop Follet, we can obey you and follow you in this new direction and, 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 and obey you to be silent on the question of the agreement with Rome. Because all of us, I was certainly ordered, you will say nothing and nothing now nor in the future about the agreement with Rome. And yet that's the very heart of our fight. That's the very heart of the Society of St. Pius X Catholic tradition versus modernism. Was this agreement with Rome? This is what Archbishop Lefebvre was fighting with for 42 years, defending the old religion of, of, the, of tradition against the new revolt, the modernism. So <clears throat> this is our, our present battle now, and, and it's the same principles involved. And it's interesting to see St. Pius X, uh, you, he, he brings out the language of the modernists, living tradition, living magisterium. And if you read the April 15th, 2012 doctrinal declaration signed by Bishop Follet in order to make the agreement with Rome, 
it has that language in it. It has that language. Tradition progresses. And uh, what's it? And, and these, lang these terms, you don't use these terms because they can, they're open to all broad interpretation. And especially where he mentions uh, ex that the doctrines of the religious liberty, which attacks Christ the King, and the, the, on the non-Christian religions of Vatican II, is reconcilable with the magisterium of the church, albeit with difficulties. But in other words, the darkness is able to be reconciled with the light. Satan is able to be reconciled with, with, with Christ. And that's false. That's impossible. It's an impossible reconciliation. And that paragraph ends saying, and also um, doctrines that are not yet formally, conceptually formulated. Doctrines not yet formally Concept, con conceptually formulated, meaning doctrines that are still yet to come. <laughs> and that's pure modernism, evolution. Because as Catholics, we know there cannot be one article added to what has already been taught. And even St. Paul says this, if an angel comes and appears to you and says, teaches you another doctrine than what I have taught you, don't listen to him. Let him be anathema. Tradition is set. And as St. Pius X says, let him be condemned, who says that there are new dogmas after the death of St. John the Apostle. There's not any new doctrines or articles of the Catholic faith. The Catholic Church will make clear doctrines that have always been believed, such as the Assumption, the Immaculate Conception. These always have been believed. But there's no new doctrine. And Vatican II was completely new doctrine. And you know this. But what's dangerous now is that these, these new doctrines, which can be compared to, uh, pardon the example, but uh, it's, it's a very clear example, a pile of cow manure. The farmers now are starting to fertilize the fields with this. So you're going to be smelling it all spring. But a pile of cow manure, that's like Vatican II and all its heresies. And no matter what cologne you use or perfume that says light of tradition, doesn't matter how much you spray, does it change what it really is? And does it really change the smell? No. But it's the same. So how is it possible that the superiors of St. Pius X, society, are now talking about the, that Vatican II can be interpreted in the light of tradition. That's just false. It cannot. Tradition condemns Vatican II. And even just one encyclical condemns these, these snakes. So, <clears throat> so no, it doesn't matter how much spray of light of tradition it doesn't change the poison of Vatican II. And now Bishop Follet officially accepts Vatican II in the light of tradition. Just read it for yourself. And no matter how they want to weasel word their way around it, it's there, it's written. And he has not rejected it, he's not denounced it. In fact, it's the opposite. Any priests who oppose and say, Your Excellency, this is wrong, this goes against the founder, this goes against Catholic tradition, this goes against Operation Survival. This goes against the very reason why you were consecrated a bishop in the first place. And the only answer they get is being silenced, transferred, heavily, heavily watched, almost prison-like watched, and expelled. So what do you do? And this is why when you read this, you see how is it possible Bishop Follet could sign this doctrinal declaration? And not only just sign it, but he's never condemned it. He's never retracted it. He's never denounced it. He has said, I withdrew the document. But what does that mean? For two weeks? Until the next time Rome wants an agreement? And we know that he's dead set on this agreement with Rome. It comes out in his speeches. It comes out in the, the, the last 
uh, declaration signed by the three bishops in, in uh, uh, June 27th, what was it, 2012, or 2013 rather, uh, paragraph 11 leaves it very open for a, a, an agreement with Rome on a, only a practical level, which Archbishop Lefebvre, you know so well, called, called Operation Suicide. Because what, what's going on now is, is a second Vatican II, and it's the same instruments being used. You got to obey, you got to obey, trust the authority. And it's the same uh, principles involved. Accepting Vatican II, accepting the new mass, accepting the new code, accepting the new profession of faith, or rejecting it. To save your Catholic faith, Archbishop Lefebvre said, you must reject the council. 